Welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel Network Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. Wisdom is understanding God's Word. Pastor Murray's unique teaching approach brings God's Word alive with meaning as he takes you on a chapter-by-chapter, verse-by-verse study of God's letter to you, the Bible. And now here is Pastor Arnold Murray. Pastor Arnold Murray. Good day to you. God bless you. Say, welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel. Welcome to this family Bible study hour. Ready to get back in this book of Proverbs. Why are Proverbs so important? From here to the end of the book, uh, and we're going to begin chapter 10 today, you have um, disjointed, it would seem to some, if you're not careful, rules of life. By that I mean, I probably should say repetition. But they are all important, very important, and you need, you need to remember this, that it is rules that help you in your religious life, rules that help you in your civil, that is to say governmental life, and rules that help you be successful in your business. And do they work? Of course they do because our Father, through Solomon, brought these to us. Some of the best advice you can ever have, some of the best counseling you could ever have in the book of Proverbs. We thank our Father for them, and we basically start a little different segment of the book with this chapter 10 uh, by Solomon. So let's just, without further ado, let's get right into it with a word of wisdom from our Father in Yeshua's name. And uh, chapter 10, verse 1, and it reads, The Proverbs of Solomon, A wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish son is the heaviness of his mother. Many scholars through the years have tried to pull a separation or something of that nature because both the father and mother are mentioned here as in different, uh, not necessarily different categories, but I think that what Solomon wants you to remember is Mother Israel. Don't make her disappointed in you. But at the same time, he knew the nature of a mother. And a mother, if uh, her son is a fool, she'll stay with him. But it hurts her where a man will simply get disgusted and walk away sometimes. That mother is going to stay with that one, but she's going to have a heavy heart. So. Uh, Always remember at the same time, that that disappoints your father and mother hurts your ability to function as a normal person in your community, and you must always protect your credibility, or people are not going to listen to you. It's that simple. Verse 2, Treasure of, treasures of wickedness profit nothing. But righteousness delivereth from death, meaning you gain eternal life. By what, and, and never forget what righteous is. It's simplified, it simply means doing what's right to the best of your ability. You defeat death, you rob Satan, you throw a br brick right into Satan's machine. But at the same time, you can be rich with ill-gotten gains called mammon. And you're not going to keep it long. It's going to be uh, removed from you. We have this new game in this generation where they usually take, let's say in the, the drug uh, cultures, um, we take their homes, cars, automobiles, airplanes, boats, the whole bit, and auction them off to gain more money to catch more. So it doesn't matter, don't, 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 you young people, don't think just because some cat wears a fancy suit or something that he amounts to anything. He doesn't if he's peddling death. You peddle life. Verse 3, the Lord will not suffer the soul of the righteous to famish, but he casteth away the substance of the wicked. In other words, uh, a righteous soul, I don't care if you're one of the poorest people in the country, if you go by this set of rules, you're not going to remain that way because wisdom has a way of gaining substance. 
the Father will never let you do without anything unless it fits his plan to make a better person out of you. That needs to be done oft times. And it will make a better person out of people to, to force them to learn how to use common sense and to be a realist and face life head on. Get rid of the heavy stuff first and then the rest of your day will be a snap, all right? Head on, be a realist. Our Father, I, that's a promise in a sense. He will never let you hunger for food or wisdom if you will use that wisdom because wisdom makes room for her own gift and that one of those gifts of wisdom is prosperity. Verse 4. He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent maketh rich. If you're lazy, forget it. You're never going to mount a hill of beans. Um, a, that's what a slack hand is, is somebody that never uh, quite gets around to taking care of the hard stuff first, the one you dread. Get it out of the way. And you'll find it wasn't as hard as you thought it did because wisdom will help you accomplish it. God just really doesn't care for lazy people. And I suppose that lazy people have more time to supposedly pray than anyone else. And they always think that God lets them down. No, God didn't let them down. They let God down. Verse 5. He that gathereth in summer is a wise son, but he that sleepeth in harvest is a son that causeth shame. In other words, gather the harvest when it's uh, fit to be harvested. Otherwise, it isn't fit to bring in from the field. So it is with truth, wisdom, and knowledge. Gather it while you can, for there is a day coming when even as it was with the children wandering in the wilderness, it's going to be one day too late. And I'm not saying that to pressure anyone. Uh, it just simply will be. It'll be one day too late. But today is the day that you can get into our Father's Word, this letter that He has written to you, instructing you, counseling with you with a sure way. You talk about a guarantee or a play upon the word surety. He gives it to you. As long as you will use wisdom and not have a slack hand or you'll get out and hump it when the harvest is ripe, make hay while the sun shines, you'll always be set for the rainy day. Verse 6. Blessings are upon the head of the just, but violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. In other words, the just, uh, that word being the upright, those that do things that are right, um, and then God naturally is going to add um, more to their reward, that is to say, even as the work of their hands. But he that tries to gain something by violence, uh, you don't trust his mouth. Verse 7, the memory of the just is blessed, but the name of the wicked shall rot. In other words, it disintegrates into nothing. It will not be remembered. Why? Because the just, that's God's elect, and those that have free will to believe upon the Savior, their memory will always be because they will always be with us. But the, the unjust or the wicked are going to rot in the dust because they will be nothing but ashes in the lake of fire, as it is written in Revelation chapter 21. Uh, chapter 20, the beginning of it. Eight. The wise in heart will receive commandments. That's to say, the wise in their mind will receive instruction. Instruction from who? Our father or a wise uh, person. But a pratting fool shall fall. Have you ever met a pratting fool? We call pratting now kind of a ratchet jaw, okay? They do a lot of talking. 
but try to gain a little wisdom, uh, just, I mean, sift, even if you would, the pratting, and try to gain just one little word of wisdom, and you're going to come up short, because uh, they're not going to make it. They're going to fall flat on their face every time. Always remember, especially, as, now God expects us to have fun and to, he had a sense of humor himself and we have a sense of humor. That's not pratting, okay? Uh, don't become such a Puritan, in other words, that you become a religious fanatic uh, because people shun you then and your credibility goes down the tube just like a, a pratter's goes down. But um, you always protect that credibility and you set that example. But receive instruction from your Father's Word. It's true. It's proven. It works. And all you have to do is prove, to prove that is to get into the letter. Follow the advice. And don't just read it and absorb it without putting it to practice or it will not gain you one whit. You have to be a doer or you've got slack hands and you're a nothing. Verse 9. He that walketh uprightly walketh surely. Um, but he that perverteth his ways shall be known. God does not like perversion or one that will try to pervert the word to make it fit his or her own desires. Pervert, what, what does God call perversion? God calls perversion anything that is used other than in the natural sense that God brought it forth. That's per, uh, that is one that perverts. Uh, unfortunately, many of us are guilty of misusing the very nature that God put before us in our um, horticulture, our land, and so forth, even in this day. But surely, surety, or to surely, is a, in a sense, a legal term that means it's guaranteed. All right? It's going to happen good for you. Verse 10. He that winketh with the eye causeth sorrow. But a prating fool shall fall. And there again from verse 8, we see he's going to be beaten, going to fall. It's very difficult to translate this from the Hebrew into English concerning he that winketh with the eye causeth sorrow. Um, it, um, in some of the more ancient, ancient writings, it's very possible that it lost... Um, the positive uh, sense that it should have, such as uh, he that opens the eye of his mind uh, uh, dispels or does away with sorrow. And uh, I think if you will think of that in that line and then add, but a prating fool shall fall, you'll probably see the original thought that our Father intended to be held here. Otherwise, usually, a wink is one that takes lightly with the party of a third part present to take advantage of someone, and that does bring sorrow, that is to say, to mock. Verse 11. The mouth of a righteous man is a well of life. Do you know what a well is? That's what you draw life-giving water from. And from that well of a righteous man comes eternal life. I mean, words of wisdom to that effect. But violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. In other words, violence causes anything the wicked might say to be most likely inaccurate, or at least as Satan would, would report in tempting Christ in Matthew chapter 4, 95% accurate, but 5% that'll send you straight to hell. Verse 12. Hatred stirreth up strifes, but love covereth all sins. In other words, love, when applied with the wisdom, facing reality and using common sense, love usually will cause the righteous person or a right person to be able to handle a situation whereby 
even if a little um, righteous indignation flares, which is not the same as hatred, anger, but uh, is able to handle it and um, uh, can um, absorb the insult and make po a positive sense from it. That is to say, turn it to a positive sense. Hatred causes trouble, strife, everywhere it, it uh, rises. That's to say hatred for the sake of hatred. Now again, I want to emphasize righteous indignation is not hate. Righteous indignation is a proper emotion when displayed uh, in the protection as though it needed protection, that is to say our Father's word and way. The only thing it needs protecting from is the innocent that are swallowed up by uh, the insults of one that is ignorant to God's word. Verse 13, in the lips of him that hath understanding, wisdom is found. You're going to find it there. But a rod is the back of him, a rod is for the back of him that is void of understanding. In other words, um, he's going to bring trouble upon his own mind. Void of understanding means lack of sense, lack of common sense, unable to, unable to, uh, to handle wisdom and respect the rights of others. Uh, one can cause much hurt through strife, same thought following, whereby there needs to be a little correcting, but the important point is the unwise person brings it upon their own back. You write your own ticket, and God sees that you collect, whether it's the rod or whether it's blessings. Verse 14, wise men lay up knowledge, but the mouth of the foolish is near destruction. And here we go back with the prater again. A wise person uh, puts in reserve knowledge and wisdom that will surface at an instant if trouble or problems arise in your life. If you have laid in store the wisdom, what does that mean? Studying God's Word and being familiar, watching Christ, the life of Christ and the path that he set forward for us in a very simple way, that all you have to do is walk in it. You don't have to break any wakes for by yourself or hedge out a new path. Follow his, it's easy. Uh, that's not to say that you won't have troubles at times, but you can cut it, you can handle it. So um, store up the knowledge and how do you do that from God's word? By being a student of it, you gain enough knowledge and wisdom that you know how to handle almost any situation. The foolish, without that knowledge, are going to destruction. Why? Because ultimately, they're going to miss the mark and be judged into that lake of fire, Revelation 20. Verse 15, the rich man's wealth is his strong city. That's his food, that's his refuge, that's his place. The destruction of the poor is their poverty. In other words, their want even for the barest of necessities. Um, uh, the point is this, that there is no way a rich man is going to hang on to what he has, but one that is rich with God's blessings, then there's nothing wrong with that. Don't ever let anyone tell you that it's a sin to be rich. It isn't. God promises that his blessings, that's why he says gain wisdom over gold and silver because a fool cannot maintain gold and silver. They'll lose it one way or the other or someone will rip them off. But wisdom will bring you those things. So never apologize for being wealthy in righteousness. It is your badge of honor in a sense because it is the blessings of God. When God prospers a people for being diligent, wise because, through his wisdom and exercises that in a way that he instructs, you're always going to be rich. 
That is to say, your I'm speaking specifically of a ministry in this case. You're always going to be rich because God blesses. God will always give you brick to build whatever you want, wish to build, but you're going to have to do the work. Now, there's wisdom within that statement, too, if you will grasp it. Verse 16. I, I want to say one other thought concerning that. There's, there's no sin in being poor. There's no, there's no disgrace in being poor. The di disgrace is in staying that way. Because if you attain wisdom from God's word, you're not going to be poor. Well, the poor inherit the earth. No, that's a bad uh, interpretation. The humble inherit the earth. That is to say, those that are humble before God. 16. The labor, or you might say the earnings of the righteous tendeth to life. The fruit of the wicked to sin. In other words, um, if when you sin, that aids Satan, and Satan moves closer into your life, and that's why that um, repentance uh, is a necessity in this case, whereas um, doing wicked can be your undoing. It can make life real hard for you. So always repent and know that you're, the earnings of the righteous tendeth to life. In other words, it gives you a richer life. Verse 17, a better quality of life. 17, he is in the way of life that keepeth instruction. But he that refuseth reproof erreth. Why? He's going to go astray. To err and not receive correction will cause you to go out in the boonie patch. All right? You're going a way is a path, all right? A path is usually well beaten and travel is rather easy upon it. But if you refuse guidance, then certainly you're going to fall short and you're going to end out in a tulip patch in trouble, deep trouble off times. So always do it God's way. That's the only way. That is the wise way. Okay? Uh, verse 18. He that hideth hatred, uh, let's say he that does not vent his, uh, his um, anxiety, with, uh, he that hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that uttereth a slander is a fool. It isn't wise for you to cover anxieties within yourself. And some might say, well, what am I do just to blurt them out? Well, the real answer to that is that if you have wisdom, um, you're, you're probably not going to attain that hatred anyway if you attain anything in, in what we might consider a negative sense. It would be righteous indignation, and that's no sin. W wisdom... And righteous indignation can walk hand in hand. Wisdom and hatred, uh, they do not necessarily walk hand in hand. Are we to hate what Satan does? Of course. Did God hate what Satan did? Of course. Remember the sixth, the sixth and yet the seventh thing, if, if the six things God hated that we covered in Proverbs, and if you add the seventh to it, it's an abomination to God. But don't hide or build things up within yourself without a venting. That's foolish. You can't handle that. So gain wisdom, and wisdom will act as a... A, an escape valve whereby your mind is vented of those type things, emotions, and uh, you will not suffer because hate only hurts the one that does the hating, most likely. 19. In the multitude of words, there wanteth not sin, but he that refraineth his lips is wise. In other words, always know what you're talking about or don't talk. Does, does, do you understand that? I mean, that's so simple. If you don't know what you're talking about, it's better to not talk or give an answer that's simply a guess without uh, absolutely saying, I don't know, but let's reason about it. Could it be that? 
doesn't hurt to reason, but do not speak as an authority if you don't know what you're talking about. God doesn't like that. Verse 20, the tongue of the just, there again, God's elect, is as choice silver. The heart, that's to say the mind of the wicked is little worth. It has little worth. Why? It's worthless. It, uh, why? Because what is the, first of all, this word translated heart here again should be, or uh, really uh, in actuality, should be translated mind. If, um, if the mind is wicked, then certainly it's void of wisdom. That's obvious. No one could have a wicked mind if their mind was filled with wisdom. So a mind, we could translate it this way, a mind minus wisdom is worthless. Why? It can't say anything. Its joy then is in listening, absorbing, gaining. Then the, will, the wisdom embeds itself within that mind and wisdom is always a blessing, 21. The lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for want of wisdom. Now, wisdom is one of the, this is why it is always important that you listen to a person of wisdom that that is where your wise counsel comes from. I have several that I recommend highly. Solomon is one of them. There was Daniel, all oh, what the wisdom that he brought forth, Isaiah, Ezekiel, so many men of wisdom. And those words that they spoke will gladden your heart, reassure you, and make and cause you to become a wise person. So, but, uh, you could listen to the lips of a wicked person and uh, I'm sorry, there's no worth there. You're not gonna gain anything, which means what? You're wasting time and that in itself is akin to sin. Verse 21, I'm sorry, verse, um, verse uh, 22 I believe we need, do we not? Yes. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich and he addeth, addeth no sorrow with it. Now absorb that, don't read over it. The blessings of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it. In other words, our greatest possession then is the blessings of God, and why does God bless? Because you're just and you stay in the path. If he sends you out of the path, he will show you the way. Verse 23. It is as sport to a fool to do mischief, but a man of understanding hath wisdom. Um, the man that has wisdom, of course, does not participate in foolery. Now, many... Uh, when I read this particular verse and those that are akin to it, many people will label uh, sport of any kind then as foolish. That's not true. That's not what it's saying at all. Because God intends that we enjoy ourselves and there's certainly nothing with good humor in teasing someone that is able to handle the teasing and return it in full measure. You say full measure, never tease someone that is not wise enough to, to return the same humor to you. That becomes a wrong. Never tease a person that, um, that is unable to return that. So, when mischief, when teasing or sport becomes wrong, or as is described here, is when it hurts someone or their property. Anytime you tease or do a thing mischievously that destroys property or hurts an individual, 
let us say, a simple person. That's wrong. And God is not going to be pleased at all. So try to separate those things. God does not expect us to show much pain in our face from being a follower of the living God. Never a smile, never um, a moment's relaxation in good humor. That's, that's not God's way. But mischief is not of God either. And again, I will repeat, that's when someone or their property is hurt. Verse 24, the fear of the wicked, it shall come upon him, but the desire of the righteous shall be granted. Well, what is the desire of the righteous? Eternal life. And um, um, the uh, fear of the wicked, it shall come upon him, is what, what it really is saying, is whatever the wicked fear, that's what's going to fall on his head. He's, he's going to get it. He names his own sentence. It's going to happen. You can count on it. And I would have to go back to the very first chapter in the seventh verse and have you never forget that. That's the only thing, and translate it revere. Revering your father is the beginning of wisdom, is the beginning of knowledge. The wicked do not fear God, but they fear those um, pitfalls that we set as traps for the wicked. And it's going to come down on their head. I could put it a different way. Do the crime, you'll pay the time. And some might say, well, I got away with murder myself. No, you didn't. Hang around, friend. Hang around. Judgment is coming. The real judgment, not some little earthly court. 25. As the whirlwind, that's to say the storm, passeth, so is the wicked no more. But the righteous is an everlasting foundation. What foundation? The foundation, the rock on which you stand, which is to say the Savior. Why is it that the wicked go as, as the wicked storm passes by or as a bad storm passes by, so do the wicked. They're not going to be with us. That's what this earth age is about, is separating them out so we can, they can be destroyed. Well, don't we have a loving God? You bet we do. And that's why the fact that he is a loving God, he gets rid of those that are, um, are wicked followers of Satan in his way, disrespecters of Almighty God, they should be destroyed, and they definitely will be. Well, isn't there any love in your heart? Well, what do you think I teach for? Is to try to draw some of those that might be considered weak, wicked into a change of life, into following the wisdom of God. Verse 26, As vinegar to the teeth... And as smoke to the eyes, so is the sluggard to them that send him. Don't ever send a lazy person to do something. And some might say, well, he's my employee. Well, what are you doing hiring a lazy person? Let somebody else hire them. You don't want them. Uh, why would you want a lazy person on your payroll? That's, that's um, you're asking for trouble in your own camp. Uh, you should always weed out the lazy people. Get rid of them. Now, I'm not talking here about handicapped people or people that might be slow. You can always find a job fitting for those that are doing their best. But one that will not do his best, why do you have him on your payroll? He doesn't belong there until he can mature or she can mature because I don't care what you ask a sluggard, and that's what a lazy person, that, that is a lazy person. Whatever you send them to do, I guarantee you, you're going to be disappointed because they, they can't cut it. They haven't got it. Let somebody else worry with them. Get rid of them. Uh, many might say, well, that doesn't sound like a Christian saying. It is. Because you see, the lazy person hears my words quite clear. 
And sometimes reality, when you face it face to face, it can cause a lazy person to be very productive. I suppose that laziness is the hardest work in the world. Do you know why laziness is the hardest work in the world? Because it's so much easier to do what's right, have it done and be blessed than to sit with idle hands as a lazy person. That, that's hard work, doing without, being, um, having some minister, teacher, such as myself, say, get rid of him. That should be kind of an insult to them. It should prick them right to the heart. And that prick should cause them to want to change their lives, to not be in that category. Because God, the important thing this, God will never bless a lazy person until they repent and have a little change of heart. So it, it, it's so much easier to do that that is right and do it well. What do you mean, do it well? I'm not very gifted. When you're doing your best with your gift, that's well, that's good. Because the harder you try, the better your uh, gift becomes or your abilities. Think about it. All right, bless your hearts. You listen a moment, won't you please?